103 years ago, back in December 1919, an article appeared in one of the all-time great publications, Electrical Experimenter. In that article, two men, H. W. Sector and H. Gernsback, proposed an absolutely audacious design for a new amusement park ride. And this was it. It was called the Aerial Passenger Rocket and it was quite the contraption. With only the artist's impression to go off, I have recreated the whole ride as the designers imagined it. So, let's join the queue, strap ourselves in and see what it would have been like. You would start your journey at the depot, where our thrill seekers would board the capsule. The capsule itself is designed to resemble an artillery shell, keeping in line with the ride's overall militaristic creative thread. With the Great War only finishing a few years prior, this creative thread, as the designers put it, is riding the wave of popularity, with the wartime spirit burning in the heart of everyone. The shell itself would measure in height 10 meters, 32 foot, with a diameter of 5 meters, 16 foot. This shell would have been big enough for eight adrenaline junkies at a time. Within the shell, you would be strapped into a seat that is attached to a gimbal. I assume the seats to be brown leather, as that will help speed up cleaning of the pods between rides. The seats have a large weight attached to the bottom. This, in conjunction with the gimbal, would in theory always keep the seat in an upright position during the ride. Once loaded, the steps would be removed and the transparent plastic doors would come down and seal the pod. With our fearless patrons in position and the pod sealed, it would be transported from the depot by rail to the launching cannon. Scaling the water tower and the cannon from the illustration, I estimate the tower to be around 80 meters or 262 foot in height, and the cannon to be 75 meters or 246 feet in length, sat at a 45 degree angle around 100 meters or 328 feet away from the water tower. At the base of the cannon, it would be offloaded from the carriage and moved by a series of rollers to the base of the barrel, where it would be loaded. The designers offer two possible ways of launching the shell, one through compressed air and the other through electromagnetic acceleration, much like a modern roller coaster. The inventors did include within their illustration this sign, so it may have needed to be a combination of both methods to get the hefty shell up to the advertised 600 miles an hour once in position, the breach would be shut and everyone would prepare for launch. journey to the heavens. At the peak of its parabolic arc, the occupants would experience momentary weightlessness before they have a crash course in Newton's first law. Gravity regains control and begins to accelerate the shell back down to Earth. Using fluid friction, it would gradually decelerate as it slides down the flume from the water tower. Arriving at a gentle stop, the capsule would be ferried to shore by a conveyor belt. At the shore it would be loaded back onto a wagon where it would return to the depot to unload its passengers and take on a new set of madcap riders. So, what do you think? If it was built, would you go for a ride? Thanks for watching.